you so much for clicking on this video. It's not going to be one of the nicest subjects, but it is a follow-up to my leaves video from a couple of days ago. I didn't include these two candidates because basically this is the first time that I'm seeing something like this and it's not something that I could be specific about in order to include it with regards to what to watch out for, is it bad, is it good. Recently, I don't know if you've seen in the Spanish news that Spain has had a century snowstorm. I know it's laughable if you're out in Canada, but for our environment, our country, that's not normal. I have had an abnormality in my dining room that in the days of this Filomena, I think her name was, the storm that came through, my dining room temperatures dropped to 14 degrees Celsius and uh, that has never happened before. 16 has been my minimum. A couple of uh, weeks ago, I saw 15. I wasn't concerned. And I've been sort of monitoring what's going on with my orchid, quite eagle-eyed because of the fact that I'm realizing I'm in certain territory that I'm not accustomed to, temperature-wise. Also because of my growing method. Whatever happens in the ambient air, self-watering, inorganic growing, especially with LECA, will drop. Whatever the ambient air temperature is, the temperature in the pot is much lower. So my guesstimate, I've never held a thermometer into the pot, but my guesstimate is always th three degrees. And if that is exaggerating, I'm okay with it. I'd rather err on the side of caution by exaggerating the temperature difference as opposed to, you know, being too complacent and saying, that's nah, going to be fine. I don't use heat mats. I would rather spend my pennies on giving my orchids the light they need. So, yeah, I can't at the moment afford to use electricity up for heat mats. So I'm trying to tide orchids over and on the right you see Cilogeny ponderata and on the left you see Dendrobium lori mortima. And you can see what the leaves are doing or not doing or still do and will continue to do. These are leaves from last year's growth. So by no means are they mature enough to be dropping off. And uh, Pandoratos are not known actually to drop their leaves. I have accepted that in my climate, it's a possibility that I won't have fully leafed out bulbs as long as a Pandorata can hold on. But this to me, looks like cold damage. It can't be at this time of year lack of humidity because I have 65 to 55 around there always humidity in my dining room and that's not even with the humidity trays full of water. As a matter of fact all my humidity trays at this point are dry because of the low temperatures I've got enough humidity I don't need to add to humidity in my dining room area. Clearly you can see that, um, yeah, we are having issues. I am not concerned about the health of the orchid. Absolutely not. The Pandorata has a massive, massive storage system in the back. It's, it'll be fine. It's not like the orchid is dying or, or declining. It's just a real, real shame that my newest leaves are already looking like this. Uh, you see the older leaves in the back, I've cut some tips off just because they were unsightly, but those are the old bulbs. Those are not even the bulbs in the back here that I grew. She came with these three bulbs. I grew the one down and then this one, and you can see that the one that I grew in the first season with me is already leafless, only holding on to the leaves that she came with but I don't think for long. So yeah, that's, uh, in my opinion, that is cold damage. However, I am always open to hearing what you have to say. The orchid is clean. There are no pests. That is natural fertilizer right there. But I think that even if I cut the leaf, I think I would still lose the leaf eventually and not do the orchid any favors and let her just absorb what's left of the leaves. But 14 degrees Celsius 
in lacquer and semi-hydro for a Pandorata? No. That's not a good thing. I may need to reassess if this continues. Of course, this could be a one-off one colder winter than we've ever had, simply because of the fact that in 2020, all the emissions stopped and nature had time to breathe and is doing what it's supposed to be doing in winter. Regardless of where you are, maybe you've seen weather changes as well, simply because for one year, there was a 95% drop of everything that is detrimental to the environment, to the climate. It'll take another winter or two for me to see if my temperatures are now at 14 degrees as opposed to 16. But in the meantime, yeah, it's something I'm going to have to accept and she will lose those leaves and then we will get a new growth and I'm sure we will get blooms again. But I just wanted to show these abnormalities in my collection. Here's Lori Mortimer. This orchid, or these kinds of orchids, and I'm not saying Dendrobium phalaenopsis fit in, but I do put them into the same category because I'm having the similar issues. Although this one has not been chewed up by a pest that I couldn't get under control. This one is a warm to hot grower, and I seem to be struggling with these kinds of orchids. Although it was doing really well for me from when I got it, it looked like something the cat dragged in backwards. It grew this little growth as it was acclimating to my environment. Then I got this growth here, the second one, which bloomed in 2020. So that one matured throughout 2020 and bloomed. And then for the winter, it started on this growth. And because it's a warm to hot growing orchid, it doesn't have cold temperatures to contend with. So it is a year round grower, except in my climate. What is concerning me about this orchid is that the new growth that grew over the winter in the last three days, four days, is showing me this. The fact that I carried her outside without the leaves dropping is second to a miracle because there was nothing holding them on at all. And the weird thing about this orchid is, for me weird, and where I have to be very cautious, she is a happy sap producer it's a, she's a machine on happy sap. The leaves are very fleshy, almost succulent light in their texture. They're not leafy or anything like that. And then she produces a massive sticky happy sap. And normally I would now go in and start removing these, but I won't do that on camera because these sheaths here have a gelatinous texture to them. They are not dry. Even though the leaf has fallen off, and it's not dry either. There's nothing crunchy about this. The sheath is gelatinous and it has a wet feel to it. And I don't like that one bit, not with these cold, cold temperatures. So I'm going to be taking these off and uh, hopefully manage to hold on to this orchid. But again, the cold temperatures in my dining room, I think are now causing issues with some of my orchids which is a shame because at this point there's nothing I can do about it but just hope for the best and that when they get the sun on them that they warm up enough in order to be able to carry themselves over into the warmer part of this year which is you know it's anywhere from four to six weeks away where the night temperatures will be back up to 15 degrees celsius and that would then include my dining room being just a smidgen warmer 17. It can be a question of four weeks. It can be a question of six weeks. It can also mean that I have two nights where the temperatures are warmer and then five nights where they drop again. But yeah, it's a shame, especially with the Lori Mortimer. After I had to say goodbye to my Denfels and say, okay, enough already. None of this warm, hot growing nonsense in my collection anymore because clearly there is a problem. But the Lori Mortimer in the last three days was showing signs of stress. Here's what I want to show you in case you see these black spots here. They have been here with me all season. This is nothing new. This is for when what happens in my case, when she produces so much happy sap as she grows, that with the hot winds that I get during spring and summer, it just crystallizes 
and then becomes one with the leaf as it grows. So these are all happy sap spots. Now, are they going to be detrimental in the cold weather? I don't know. The fact that this leaf is dying off for me, oh, okay, in my circumstances, that's normal. It's not for the orchid, but in my circumstances it is because it is the older growth. The fact it just happened radically on the new growth in the back here, that raises my eyebrows and that's why I decided to film this video because maybe one day this orchid won't be around anymore. And I'm just uh, biding my time. So that is the follow-up to my leaves and read your orchids video. I am reading, I'm reading. I don't like this chapter, not one bit. So I'm going to hopefully skip to the end very fast and it'll be a happy ending. <laughs> All right, let me know if you're seeing similar signs on your orchids and if it is the cold or what do you think in your case it may be. Having said that, if you think I'm misjudging what is going on with my orchids and their leaves, then my goodness, feel free to give me a heads up in the comments below. I would really appreciate it very, very much. Thank you everybody for being here, for watching, for supporting the comments. I love it, I love it. Have a wonderful day and stay safe, please. Take care, bye.